Hey, Gilbert, how are you? Doing great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, everybody, for taking the time out to uh, share the next uh, 20 minutes or so with us. My name is Brad Moore. I'm the CEO of Global Cannabis Applications Corp. We are a, a, a medical cannabis technology company um, based in Vancouver, Canada, with satellite offices in the EU and also in Israel. So to jump in, um, obviously the normal stuff, forward-looking statements, the only thing we're going to talk about today is stuff that we've talked about. Um, that's obviously, uh, so any questions, we're happy to answer as many questions you can, but it'll be about the content we're going to show in here. And one of the things you'll see as we go through this presentation, you'll actually see we're very, as uh, 2021 is very big on, on execution for us, you're actually going to see these little press release symbols all out throughout the deck and those are things that we've actually accomplished on so you'll know that going forward that's our whole focus so i, I want to start with the argument about um, the demand for cannabis data and i think this is really really important and you know kind of goes back to when we were envisioning this project many years ago um you know we saw that there was a gap as an investor and many growers i said you know there's just a the term medicinal or medical is used very loosely in this space. If you really truly want to understand for something to be medical, there's a series of gates of things have to go through. That demand uh, as of 2019 and 2020, the demand for uh, um, clinical studies and data around cannabis, what it does in the body, how it works, has just grown incrementally to the point that even before we're kind of coming out of the gates, we're already in negotiation with some major as you can see here about the press release symbol, we were already in negotiations with major data brokers and the people that were looking to get that data from them had to do with, had to do with uh, some of the big accounting firms, hedge fund managers that we're looking at in terms of, you know, uh, uh, how their grows and how the products are being used and also some major pharmaceutical companies. So the demand definitely is out there. I think the lack of information um, and, and one of the things about why what we're doing is you'll see in the next in the next in the video we're going to play next for you about our product is so important is very specifically around something that happened in Canada recently. And so right now, um, uh, one of the major growers canopy is involved in excuse me, uh, 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 like an investigation from Health Canada, and it's about uh, labeling on their products. Now we're talking probably primarily about the recreational market, um, which is fine. But, you know, the argument was from one of their competitors was they said, you know, a certain level of THC was all this and it was too average for there to be, you know, for what the lab tests would have said. Now, when you say, okay, so you look at that argument and you translate that over into what that would mean if it was medical, could you imagine you know, some uh, like a mom in the suburbs worrying about giving something to her son for epilepsy and it was marked in, in, inappropriately or uh, uh, not correctly with, you know, too much THC or too less THC. And that could cause a very significant health concerns. And that's why one of the things you're going to see is around the world, there's different regulations that are all over the map. And that's where we've come into the fourth thing. And what you're going to see, and, and, and my job today is not so much about cannabis as this is an argument about the use of blockchain, specifically the Ethereum 2.0 as a working blockchain. We all know how well it does in uh, uh, how well it can be used for cryptocurrency and the construct of like, you know, uh, uh, let's say unregulating the regulator taking banks out and using technology to, to show where, the, where people can do financial transactions and it's self-controlling self or self-reporting through the immutable blockchain. And this is actually gonna be, uh, hopefully you'll take away from our product video of how you can use the blockchain actually in a business and specifically in an industry where there's a lack of regulation because there's a lack of data. So to that, I will advance us and we'll get over here and start the product video. Powered by TraceLocker, Citizen Green Ifixi is the world's first blockchain-powered RegTech compliance solution that enables a fast, agile registration of medical cannabis and CBD products. 
Simple, secure, and intuitive. Ifixi was designed with leading medical cannabis and CBD cultivators from Israel, Canada, and Switzerland and was built to align with their cultivation, distribution, and compliance processes. Let's follow the journey of our favorite medical cannabis grower, Susan, as she uses Ifixi to help her successfully grow, test, and ship her products to market. Ifixi allows growers like Susan to record each of the critical steps involved in cultivating and distributing. At the heart of Ifixi lays a powerful blockchain back office that ensures every piece of information is recorded, secured, and associated with a verified user, a recording process called attestation. Each user profile is created by establishing a blockchain e-wallet on their smartphone through the TraceLocker KYC app that verifies a person's identity during registration. All personal contact information, including photo ID, is validated according to local regulations and in compliance with international AML standards. Only verified users may record events. Using her smartphone's Face ID, Susan enters cannabis event details that are immutably notarized on a blockchain. Ifixi has made the process seamless so that every step of Susan's cannabis product journey can be thoroughly verified by regulators, customs officials, and consumers. Excited to get started, Susan uses the Ifixi app to set up her company's profile, including logo and grow location. Next, she defines the base mother plant for each product grow, including the genome and seed, as she records all relevant information related to the mother plant's life cycle. Susan's farm has multiple large greenhouses with separate grow zones. Susan is ready to start growing a cannabis batch. All the steps from taking cuttings, taking pictures, noting the growing zone, watering times, pesticide use, and lighting can all be logged using the app right up to harvesting. With her batch ready for sale, Susan takes that next step, product testing by a lab. She creates a lab profile that includes the lab name, address, and the weight of the test sample. Then she takes a photograph of the shipping label. When the lab verifies potency and terpene analysis, Susan takes a picture of the lab report, and now this entire cannabis batch is shown to be legally compliant and ready to be packaged and sent to the market. Ifixi continues to help Susan in her business's next phase, getting her cannabis product to a distributor or retailer. Using the app's proprietary process management, Susan creates a unique QR code for her shipment called a digital twin, the shipper puts the QR code onto the shipment, so when a customs agent scans her Ifixi QR code, a web page opens that provides all the relevant information about Susan's shipment. All the attested events entered by Susan and her team are viewable through a QR code scan. Because this information is tamper-proof and attested to by a natural entity, the agent is happy to authorize the shipment for entry, and soon Susan's products are ready for sale. Finally, the distributor that receives Susan's shipment scans the QR code using his app, thus making the digital twin QR code as delivered, thereby preventing the cloning of such valuable QR codes by potential bad actors. From cultivation to retail, only Affixi's unique application of advanced RegTech technology guarantees consumers that Susan's products are compliant and are the right choice for them. All right, so... Good stuff. So I hope everybody, um, you know, you, the, the thing to take away, so there's a couple of kind of key components here. First of all, this is not an MVP. This product is being used. Uh, it's been used um, to help CBD producers move uh, a product out of Switzerland into the EU. So it's been used at a customs level. Um, you know, if you take a look at our kind of our previous press releases, it's been used in Israel for compliance costs. Um, it's being used in the EU uh, for the largest CBD producer. We signed a deal uh, uh, to be used for like it's a sales tool because if you take a look and then you have a QR code and the consumer could walk into any dispensary and sign, you know, scan that with their phone, no app needed and come up with the whole histogram of that product, you're building confidence. And I think this is especially important when you talk about using the concept of the term medical, right? And so over the last five years, We've actually invested over six and a half million dollars. And now we, from that, we have a $42.2 million company based on the current stock price. So the, the use of Ethereum is critical path for us. The use of the blockchain is critical path. As you saw, that attestation is the representation of the data that's on there. And as you're gonna see, 
as we go into our revenue model, we actually own that data, okay? So 2019, I think, was a very defining moment in December for us when we filed our patent about cannabis on the blockchain. I, I gotta be honest with you, I, I've been involved in this since too, late 2017 when we started the idea and the construct and started moving forward. But you know, there's one thing there that we saw is that there was a real kind of lack of a lack of you know concern about data and information and the use of it. So in late 2019, we filed a patent called cannabis on the blockchain. And really what, what it's about is about use of, of the interlocking technologies, but most importantly, a process from tracking from seed to sale all the way back to seed again. Uh, there's another product video, obviously we don't have time to show you both of them, but actually shows about that the consumer, like I said, can walk in anywhere, look at any product, or even if it's online, look at that QR code and see that whole life cycle. Now, if that consumer chooses to purchase that product and they're using it, they can download the app, get rewards, and put their experience on the blockchain. So now you have something that's a full life cycle of information all the way from uh, growth to consumption and back again. Those data points on that infinity loop are what will be able to provide the regular to write meaningful regulation. And I think this is probably one of the best working examples. We know we are the first ones out of the gate to use the Ethereum 2.8, 2.0, sorry, in the medical cannabis space. We were one of the very first to use, or sorry, uh, uh, to, to provide it as a working example of it. And a regulator can now use it. And, you know, uh, uh, one of our first clients, Bless in November, was able to actually get the Israeli regulator. And I can tell you this, the most controlled regula regulatory framework for cannabis in the world to accept this process as part of the report reporting requirements. Now, wind that back to the Canadian conversation, and you're going to start to see very clearly about why if this system was being used, the argument would never come up. It would never happen. People would be on the right side of doing the right thing unless they just chose not to use the product. And while we saw in Israel, it lowers compliance costs, and we saw in Europe, it raises sales because it builds confidence. So if you have your smartphone out, uh, if you can take a chance, uh, it's take an opportunity, sorry, to scan that QR code. Um, now we make money through the use of the implementation of the SaaS, um, and we make money through the sale of the data that's on the blockchain as reported. Um, when you take a look at that, we break it down into like a per gram basis. It means it works up to about 20 cents Canadian per gram on an $8 uh, uh, product. That's a nominal increase. Um, our projections for uh, over the next two years is in SAS licensing is 25.6 million and another 23 in license of cannabis data. We have a great healthy pipeline. I think as you can see from our previous press releases um, that uh, we've signed three deals, some of them um, incredibly large with incredibly big companies and we're pushing forward on that to get our sales targets. So like I said, because of regulation, Everywhere in the world is a different patchwork of framework of rules, right? So in Canada, it's recreation. In California, it's recreational. In Oregon, it's recreational. In New York State, it's now recreational. In some other countries, it's recreational. Some other countries, it's medical only. And then we have a medical program in Canada. At the core of all of it, that's okay. Because what our system does for the medical program, it creates those data points that says, when you get into, the, into these markets, you have predictable, reliable data points that you can write these rules about. And I think this is gonna be even more important as we're moving into the United States where you have multiple insurance providers. And I'll go to the point in Canada where manual life through the Ontario Supreme Court was required to pay somebody's medical cannabis gospel. Could you imagine that if you're a, a, a payer, uh, an insurance company in the United States and you pay, have to, you're forced to pay for somebody's cannabis uh, prescription and they and it's not marked properly or you don't they don't have the right data and they have a negative reaction how 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 how, how do you cover that when you pay for them to take it and now you're paying for them to be off work and so i think this is where we're seeing a lot of the confusion our data sets through the use of this using the immutable blockchain which just basically facilitates a relationship between cultivators regulators medical professionals and consumers 
takes care of that. Through all these different areas, um, we have a go-to-market strategy and that's working out for us quite well right now. That will generate um, uh, those aggregate strategies. If you add up the math, it's 48.6 million sales um, and over 3 billion data points. And that's really gonna play itself in an interesting way because as we ingest all these things, we start to look at things using an algorithm that we've developed about how we get an average efficacy. And that kind of gets more in the personalized medical space. Um, but the idea and the concept being is stronger, proper recommendations can be made even before people get going. Well, we're a big fan of graphs over at GCAC. Obviously, as we look at you know, our, our sales increasing, we like to see a healthy increase in the, uh, the stock price. Interestingly enough, there was a one point um, in uh, early March, we reached a high of close to 40 cents. Obviously, there's obviously a lot of settling and things when you look at uh, just the, the tech crunch in March alone. But we've also realized that now that we're not a startup anymore, we're a minimum, you know, we actually have a product and we're commercially viable. We are going back and we're cleaning up the balance sheet. That's a big commitment to all our shareholders and hopefully you too. So just recently, we were able to an enforcement of a delinquent $5 million debt owned through securities. And we're uh, are in the process of returning 7% or 13 million shares to the float, from the float into treasury right now. Um, our, uh, the market's been very bullish on us in terms of uh, external outside sources. Some people are saying that, you know, a month and a half ago that in three to four months, we'd be at 90, between 50 and 90 cents. We'll see how that plays out. Um, if you're an American, you can buy some of the OTC FUAPF. We're on the pinks. We're looking at an uplisting. That's a possibility right now. We were there before. For your Canadian investors, obviously APP is our ticker symbol. Um, our team is very deep. It's dynamic. It has a lot of strength all the way through. Um, I think one of the key things is we have a good blend of go-to-market people, technology people, our partner in Abbey Technologies, and then our ability just to sell things. Uh, when you take a look at it with a, you know, we're at 25, 26 a day, that gives us a market cap of 42 million shares with 187 million out. We're obviously above that. We continue to see that growth from seven months ago and being, you know, under two cents. So obviously something's working. And a lot of that folks is just based on the execution of a lot of press releases based on a lot of execution, you know, accumulating with yesterday um, where we have, uh, uh, we signed our largest revenue deal that's forward looking for 2022. So to that point, thank you for your patience. Um, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that we have now. I'm just going to stop sharing here. Hi, Brett. So I just got time to get one question in here from Ming. Uh, he said, how does your service connect with the cryptocurrency? Yeah, so it's a good question, Ming. So um, look, our, our, what we've realized is that our buyers and you know people who use cannabis in the millennial market like crypto and they like stuff, Right now, this is a working blockchain, right? This is about actually the use of it in the thing. So um, um, we're always kind of looking for opportunities and ways to connect with that millennial market, but currently right now, it's just a working blockchain. Sure, maybe one last question here. Do you have a proof of concept with a regulator? Yeah, well, the best proof of concept, that's an excellent question, right? The best proof of concept that we have is the, you know, is the Israeli regular actually allowing, that's the most strictly controlled cannabis market for this system to be used for compliance. Um, more to come on that, a lot more Gilbert as we're working, it's a, it's a stepping stone as we move along. So thank you, Brad, for addressing the questions here. So we're running out of time, so I'll let you go. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much, Gilbert.